What's going on everybody? Blazing here. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me on another Raid Shadow Legends video. We got to talk about Akrizia today. There was a 10x this weekend for her uh, or 15, 25x, whatever you want to call it. But some of you may have gotten her and if you did, congratulations. You got an account changing champion that is going to help you in Hydra, especially uh, with the recent, you know, <laughs> debacle in Hydra. This could be good or bad i don't know you let me know in the comments down below and while you're there make sure you click that like button and click the subscribe button and let me know what you guys think about this guide that said let's talk about akrizia and why and how you should build her first of all the biggest thing about akrizia is every one of her hits is enemy max hp now granted they're not all going to hit the same the a1 is going to hit a lot weaker than the a2 and the a3 because of the different multiplier and how it's scaled but the A2 and the A3 are pretty much on par with, you know, between both of them. The A1 is going to give you a decreased defense. I don't like building for it because I don't think it's worth it. You're going to have a much more consistent decreased defense built somewhere else. Uh, the A2 is going to give you a nice thick shield, which is great based on the damage that she does. And then the A3 is going to deplete the enemy's turn meter. Granted, on bosses, you can't do it. Everybody else, though, if it's an NPC, it's definitely going to help. And the big thing here is her passive. Her passive decreases the damage taken by AoE attacks by 50%. This is an insane passive, a built-in damage mitigation, which is crazy, huge, right? Uh, this allows you to build her a little less tankier, make it so she doesn't need as crazy of stats, and then you can focus a little more on the crit damage and the speed, uh, which is what we are actually going to do in this build. And then the second part of her passive is... is uh, if the target's HP, right, max HP, is double of this champion's max HP, uh, it will deal enemy max HP hits on everything. So this is kind of crucial in her build. You don't really want to go too ham on their HP. Um, you want to build her, you know, a little more defensive uh, and find that really sweet spot. So let's go ahead. Let's pull up the Hell Hades Optimizer, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I would build her. All right, so I've got a Crazia pulled up on the Hell Hades Optimizer. And now for this, you could go one of two ways. You could go damage mode, survival mode. Um, it really depends on what you want. Survival for her is good um, just because you want to try to build her defense up, not her HP as much. Uh, damage mode is, you know, it, 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 it's, it's just easy and said and done. Uh, and then balance mode is actually the one that I really like to use. So for her, we're going to go balance mode. Now, again, if you're bringing decreased defense and weaken, the mitigate, or not the mitigation, but the stats needed to hit the enemy max HP cap are a lot lower. They're closer to like 2 to 25 uh, if you're bringing just even decreased defense. So taking that into account, there's a couple of things you want to check out with Acrisia. So starts wise, I really want to kind of look at like, a minimum of 3500 defense right hp because it is hydra because we're using it for a lot of end game content i think 60,000 is a pretty fair number you could drop it a little lower but then if you drop it any lower i would definitely say put up defense try to get it to that 4200 uh 100 crit rate right now some of the times you may not have decrease defense out you may not have weekend so the damage is going to lag. 3% is 3%. It really depends up to you. But for myself, because I am currently trying to just get as much damage pumped out on her as possible, I'm going to go for 350% crit damage. And that will kind of make up if I ever miss that decreased defense. I'll still try to hit for pretty hard, right? It's not going to be the cap on enemy max HP hits, but it's still going to be pretty hard. I'm not looking for any resistance. I'm not looking for any accuracy. And then the other thing I really want to prioritize is just speed. I wanted to go as fast as possible as I can on Hydra, right? Uh, slots wise, we want to make sure that we got crit damage on the gloves. Crit, uh, we want to go with the defense or HP on the chest. As for helmet, neck piece, uh, sorry, helmet, uh, shield, and weapon, we want to go HP and defense ring same thing hp and defense necklace uh we want to go for crit damage and then we want to go for hp or defense now on the boots again i always like leaving that 
because if I can't get enough speed, uh, then I know I want to go speed for this. But if I know that she's going to be fast enough for me, then I'll go with a defensive base stat, most likely defense to try to get her a little higher. Stats wise, uh, sets wise, lethal and savage are good. If you're just trying to build without decreased defense, so if you're trying to build for stage 20 or below, if you're looking for any hard mode dungeons, if you're looking for any bosses, because they're capped at the 10%, it's not worth it. There are other sets out there that are going to be better for her, such as Relentless, such as, um, what's it called? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I forgot its name already. Um, such as Reflex, right? Those are going to be better sets for her. Uh, putting her in sets that are going to give her any sort of damage mitigation doesn't really make a lot of sense just because she's already got that 50% built in, right? Um, building her with about 60k HP, most of the NPCs that you're going to go up against in any sort of bosses or any dungeons or anything like that are already going to have twice the HP that she has. Uh, glyphing situation... We like to go with, you know, a five star glyph. Let's say we have those. Uh, I'm not going to go that much for speed. I don't care for accuracy on her build, right? So let's go ahead, hit optimize, start, and let's see what we come up with. It's going to take a minute here. Hopefully not a day or two hours. 38 minutes, 33 minutes. Wow, this is working out pretty fast. Ooh, I did. That's what I forgot. Whoops. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to actually build her with Relentless. I'm sorry, I forgot that I needed to put the sets in. Um, the next set that I really actually want to work with, and I'm totally so sorry about this, guys, um, is actually going to be, I like putting her in, in a two-piece Immortal because if she's taking a lot of turns, um, if she's my last damage dealer on something, she'll be able to heal up, right? And especially because she's already got that damage mitigation in, she's not going to get a lot of, um, she's not going to have a lot of damage on her. Is it really necessary? Not really. If you want to build it with accuracy, I would go Perception. But again, this is what I really like to do with her. Um, and then as for gear sets for her amulets and stuff, um, Refresh are the best ones, right? Um, I try to go for at least one or two. Uh, we're going to go shoot for two because I don't think I have a lot for dwarves. So let's go ahead. Um, let's stop that. Sorry. I knew I was forgetting something. I was forgetting the gear sets. All right, so here we go. Uh, 92% better than what we currently have. So she's going to be sitting at 64k HP, 3.6k defense, 264 speed, 352 crit damage. The accuracy is actually not that bad because if I do actually invest in some area bonuses, she's going to have enough accuracy to land almost anything else. And then same thing for resistance. She'll have enough resistance to almost resist everything else. So I like this build, right? We got the two reaction or two refresh accessories i don't have anything for the um the neck pieces unfortunately uh relentless and immortal so we're gonna go ahead and equip this in game all right so we got it equipped in game and now again we have her built with a relentless and immortal set a uh, couple of things that i will have to rework is her gauntlets need to be reworked towards crit damage so again this is a future build we'll get it done her neck piece is going to need to do the same thing and then as for the boots, it's already speed. I'll take it. It's not bad, right? So in Hydra as well, on top of everything else she's going to have. So she's looking at 284 speed, which is pretty solid. Don't forget, we still have another 30% uh, or 32% crit damage. So she's going to be at 364 solid. I'll take that. Uh, she's going to have enough resistance, basically, uh, almost. Uh, accuracy, you know doesn't really hurt me too much if she doesn't have it i'm not going to really worry about the a1 putting decreased defense on uh tankiness she's going to be pretty solid as a matter of fact i may even switch it from the optimizer because i forgot i had some extra stuff in here so i may just go a little more defense heavy because i don't want to have too much hp on her right remember she does double the damage as long as she has half the hp of the opponent so that's going to work out well for us especially if we try to keep it around the 60,000 mark. Blessings wise, it's really depending on what you want to do. Crushing Ren, because I have a six star, works out well for her. You could go Cruelty, or you could also come down and take yourself, um, where is it here? Soul Reap, right? That does work out pretty well, especially if you're going to use her in some dungeons. 
Masteries wise, here you, it really depends. You could go for the Helm Smasher. If you're just trying to use no decrease defense, you come for the Helm Smasher and you kind of hope that that works out. I don't like it uh, because it's very inconsistent. I'd rather take the extra damage from War Master, come down, take Methodical, bring it down along with Single Out, Life Drinker, along with Keen Strike and Heart of Glory and take deadly precision now as for the support side this is really dependent on what you want um i like going down the uh accuracy side just on the off chance that we do you know land some stuff for uh accuracy or land some of that decreased defense it helps out but you could essentially just come right down and take yourself steadfast take uh shield barrier right because she does have her own shield on the a2 you could come down and take Rapid Response, Cycle of Magic, and Lore of Steel. And then if you really want to come down here, uh, the only one that I would say is Lasting Gifts, but I didn't really bother spending the two extra 100 scrolls for it. All right, so let's take a peek in Clan Boss just by herself. No decreased defense, no weaken. He has definitely got more than enough HP, so we're going to be taking less damage. Um, and we're going to be doing max damage. It's going to be enemy max HP hits on everything. So let's see with the A2 here. What do we hit? 215 223 again trying to get the cap damage on clan boss is going to be difficult because he just w without having crit enough crit damage which is again a ridiculous number it's gonna be hard uh so let's see what does the a3 hit with 206 185 okay uh let's go to the a1 214 so we're hitting pretty solid around the 200 mark for each one all right so now we got lydia in the team and we're gonna go ahead use decreased defense and weekend the a2 now we're gonna be hitting for the absolute most damage which is 369k we are proccing those war master procs which is great right um in certain cases like this bring in that war master or maybe even flawless execution could work uh flawless execution sorry could work for you helm smasher would not really work war master probably the best one all right let's see here a3 363 339 so we're hitting pretty consistently for the same amount of damage let's go ahead get your turn in all right so a1 i guess we're gonna have to wait and see 197 we got decreased defense coming up now a1 again 373 so cap of the damage is pretty much there um i like the build i'm pretty comfortable with it let's test it on doom tower and see what it does against some of the mobs all right so we're at stage 120 of hard mode doom tower and we're taking up the eternal dragon so let's go ahead let's put decrease defense down and weaken of course we missed on both of them does my lydia not have enough accuracy damn all right so i guess we're doing the first part without decrease defense and weaken so let's go ahead a2 we're hitting for 376 374 pretty solid we took out a big actually chunk right uh it looks like we i don't know i don't think we did a cap the uh max cap right because if we did the max actually no we did yeah if we did the max cap we'd be right about here right because each one of these is 25 percent so uh let's see with the a1 what are we going to do now Okay, so we hit for 125, not ideal, right? Let's see, can we uh, can we reset some of our cooldowns? No. Nope. All right, so we're back with Lady Mikage, and we put her in the lead just to get some more accuracy to make sure our Lydia does not fail because I don't have enough accuracy. So with the A2 now, here we go. Enemy max HP hit. We should pretty much land somewhere about here, right? Double hit. Yep, right, right about where I said, right? Um, let's go single hit. How much are we going to hit? I didn't even see that first one. 420. So we basically did 40% of her damage. And again, this is why you want Relentless because she went back to back with this. And that's 40% of the damage already done to the boss. So you guys let me know in the comments down below what you think. Is the Akrizia build worth it? Relentless? Immortal? I think... You know, for me, she's always done well with these kind of builds. I did like to beef up her defense to about 4.2k. But again, having that inbuilt damage mitigation 
doesn't really tell me that she needs that extra defense so i think 4.2 uh, is a little too much for her 3.6 is pretty good i want to focus on as much crit damage and speed as possible because if i don't have the decreased defense it's gonna help out uh you guys again let me know in the comments down below what you think of the build if you guys got some time swing by on sunday 2 p.m est for the knights of clarity podcast where we talk everything raid shadow legends we talk about the good the bad and the ugly there's definitely been a lot of ugly lately I'm hoping we get some good right around the corner but who knows we'll have to wait and see and as always guys much love much appreciation be safe be well be good to each other and i'll catch you guys next time